New developments today in the case against three people charged in connection to killing a teenager. He had a good. What investigators say started as a traffic stop soon led them to a disturbing discovery at a Franklin County home. After violence against black men and police last week across the country, what some people in Lexington are now doing to overcome stereotypes. This is WQIT News at 6. Good evening. They just want to know why the family of a murdered Mercer County teenager tells us they're left with many unanswered questions about the case. And this comes as three teenagers charged in connection to the murder appeared in court. Police say that 17 year old Tristan Cole was shot to death in April. One of the three suspects, a 16 year old, is charged with murder as an adult. Phil Pendleton has our top story at 6. This is Trent Easterling's first appearance in adult court. The murder and robbery suspect is only 16, but he's facing these charges as an adult. I'm trying to find peace really with it still and um, find answers. Dustin Cole questions why anyone would want to harm his cousin. 17 year old Tristan Cole's body was found near a barn off a rural Mercer County Road in April. And he didn't show up at school. He had a good heart and he was trustworthy. He was trusting of people. He didn't see no harm in anybody. Megan Sims and Zachary Lay, both 18, are charged with evidence tampering. Police say they tried to do away with the gun used in the crime. Attorneys for all three pleaded not guilty for them. I don't think forgiveness will ever come. Hatred, no. But to forgive, no. Not for something like that. No. Tristan Cole's family says they're still trying to put their arms around exactly what happened that day back in the spring. They say they still don't know why it happened, but they say it sends a powerful message. The victim and all the suspects are just teenagers. Kids these days, they get mad and instead of talking or just a, just a simple argument turns into a um, unfortunate incident that should have never been. Court officials say Easterling remains in a juvenile facility. If he's found guilty and upon turning 18, he'll be sentenced as an adult. In Mercer County, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. Sims and Lay have both posted bond and are right now out of jail. We have an update tonight on the search for the remains of a northern Kentucky, Kentucky couple. Police say that Robert Jones and Crystal Warner were murdered. They've arrested Craig Pennington and charged him with the murders. Jones and Warner were last seen July 3rd leaving the Washington County rental cabin that they owned. Today, family members say they were back at the cabin searching the area for any clues. And they're also hoping to bring in some canine units to help in that search. It has been a wet day across much of Kentucky. We've been tracking rounds of showers and storms, and some of them packed with heavy rain. Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey has an early look at your forecast. Yeah, several areas picking up close to an inch of rain on the day with those tropical downpours in the tropical sky. That continues on our nine live sky cams from Interstate 65 all the way into the mountains of eastern Kentucky. Everybody with mainly overcast conditions, though the farther west that we go, seeing at least a peak or two of some sunshine. Lexington, yeah, not so much right now. Uh, mostly cloudy skies. The humidity is way, way up there. 77 degrees, humidity at 79%. Even though the temperatures are nice, sweat factors up there because of the high humidity. Winds are gusting up a little bit at around eight miles an hour. Much better defender compared to what we were looking at a little earlier. Maybe a sprinkle sail from Carlisle to Paris over toward Mount Sterling, heading into northern parts of Bath County. Thunderstorms, western Kentucky put down flooding rains there. Notice that little complex is trying to work its way toward E-Town. If that can hold together, may get into parts of central Kentucky. But overall, as we go through the evening, a shower, a thunderstorm is a possibility with temperatures into the muggy 70s. Familiar pattern taking shape. I've got more thunderstorms in that hour-by-hour -hour forecast minutes away. It started with a traffic stop during which deputies say they found drugs inside a car. But the Franklin County Sheriff says the investigation soon led them to a home near Frankfort where they found two young children alone inside. And now two people face charges in the case. Sean Moody is tracking the investigation. Franklin County Sheriff Pat Melton said this started as a traffic stop when a deputy noticed a car driving recklessly. He said that deputy did a little more investigating and found there was more going on. Melton said this started just before 11 o'clock Monday night. He said a deputy noticed a car swerve into the median along US 60 in the Thornhill area. 
Melton said the driver, Chelsea Sutherland, told the deputy she had marijuana in the car and gave him permission to search. He also found a bag, bag containing methamphetamine in the driver's door and found a loaded 25 caliber semi-automatic handgun uh, under the back seat. He also found a large knife wrapped in a towel in the back seat along with two homemade shanks. He said there were also some checks in the car that had been filled out. That caught the deputy's eye. The deputy had, had found out that a trooper out of Post 12 had been, uh, was at, had been at Miss Sutherland's residence uh, for fraudulent checks being passed. So he said the deputy went on to investigate at her home on Swigert Avenue. That's when he said the deputy discovered Sutherland's three and four year old children had been left there alone. You've got these young children who don't have a choice. They don't have a choice about, about what to do, where they are. And you've got uh, parents and family members that are more concerned without getting high and, and, and doing their drugs than they are taking care of their children. The deputy arrested Sutherland on drugs, weapons, and traffic charges. Kentucky State Police arrested a passenger, Christopher Green, on charges of possession of a forged instrument for the checks. Melton said those children are with another family member now. In Frankfurt, Sean Moody, WKYT. And the sheriff said social services workers are involved now. This afternoon, President Obama and former President George W. Bush were among those who spoke at a memorial service for five Dallas police officers killed in a shooting last week. President Obama asked Americans to open our hearts to each other. That shooting came after two black men were killed by white police officers in Louisiana and Minnesota. The violence has sparked protest and tense debate around the country. New at 6, Miranda Combs shows us what's being done here in Lexington to address the new reality of overcoming stereotypes. We met in a small library inside First Baptist Bracktown. The room is lined with books, perspectives, and different perceptions, just like the people we came to talk to. We all have these biases, and so we have to have those conversations with them. These two are in charge of black males working. Are you ready? Yes, ma'am. BMW is a Saturday program in Lexington that's grown now to 325 African American boys. What we're doing is teaching them life skills that will help them in the future. Josh Wooldridge will soon graduate from the program, but there was one Saturday seminar he can't shake. That was a life-changing experience. He and his classmates met with police. It wasn't to alarm, it was to understand. I feel like I shouldn't have to be scared of police officers as far as just, um, you know, when they approach me, what's going to happen. You never know. It's just how they approach the situation as well as the way I approach the situation. So the BMW program pushes communication between police and young African-American males. They teach them how to react if they are pulled over by an officer. They don't just teach the kids, they teach the parents too. But this is the world we live in. So we have to prepare our young men for those, for those types of instances that happen. To keep the interior light on, hands on the steering wheel, you wait till the officer addresses you and wait till they ask you to make any subtle movements until they ask you for your registration, your insurance, and your license. Now they're telling me to keep everything out, insurance, ID, everything. So it has a real direct impact on them as African American kids. And Former police chief Anthony Beatty worked yeah. patrol in Lexington for years. He recalls lessons like this are not new. He says back in the 80s and early 90s, he remembers officers handing out brochures explaining to all drivers how to respond if pulled over. I have these video tapes, if you will, of these images in my head about what you are and who you are and what you're going to do, and you have a set of those principles that you have for me. And so when that traffic stop is made, those tapes start playing for both of us, the person who stopped and the officer too. Beatty grew up in Lexington's inner city. His perception of police was not positive. Police were only around his streets when arrests were being made, sometimes violent. There was no relationship between his community and the officers that patrolled. He says that's what's missing today across the country, a connection. we got to get back to more time in the neighborhoods. No justice! He says the recent killings of police and African Americans has started an important dialogue. But now there has to be more. But the images we're burning into our kids now, I shudder to think what impact it has on them long run. So the conversations need to happen now. They need to be intense. They need to be healthy. And they need to move the ball forward. That's the larger question. Why do we have to have those conversations right. with African American uh, youth? 
particularly boys. The fact that we had that conversation says a lot. But the conversations, they say, are practice in an unpredictable society. It's always about being proactive better than being reactive. It's easy to raise strong children and repair broken men. It is. So you start That's our early. motto. Matter of fact, they won't have any interaction, any negative interaction with the police if we, take, if we, if we help them that's uh, right. become strong young men. And Beatty went on to say police interactions with the community tend to change over time and depend on circumstances. He says right now police need to go back to neighborhoods and establish relationships with their communities. Which sounds very simple and mm -hmm. good, but of course that requires some funding for that. And he believes there will be more federal funding coming in for these community relations programs with police. So we'll see. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Miranda. Well, a Georgetown store owner has come up with a special way to show appreciation for police. Karen Tingle Sames owns Carriage House Gifts and Flowers. She started Project Blue Ribbons, which places bows on homes or mailboxes in support of Georgetown police. She says she came up with the project after police officers were killed in Dallas. And knowing that they do go out there and put their lives on the line every day for us, and it can be something small, it can be something big that happens, but they do a lot for us, and sometimes they go unappreciated, and I just wanted to help show a little appreciation back. She also hopes to raise $500 for the Georgetown Citizens Police Academy. Tomorrow marks the one-year anniversary of deadly flash flooding in Johnson County. Four people died in the flooding. The Flat Gap community was one of the hardest-hit areas. Many homes were destroyed there. As cleanup still continues, survivors say they've learned a valuable lesson. There's hope. There is tomorrow. I mean, we're not promised tomorrow, but if there is a tomorrow, there's hope. Some people who lost their homes in the Flat Gap community have since returned to that same area. Have you been playing Pokemon Go the last few days? The Better Business Bureau says there are a few things you need to know to protect your money. That's next. And then instead of receiving gifts on her birthday, a Lexington woman celebrated by helping others. It has become a huge hit the last week or so. If you have not played the new Pokemon Go game, you probably know someone who has. It is a virtual reality game played on your smartphone. While many people have had a lot of fun with it, the Better Business Bureau also has some warnings. The BBB says be careful if you have a phone plan with limited data. It uses a lot of data because it uses GPS, and you could get hit with a hefty bill at the end of the month. The BBB also warns Pokemon Go players to pay attention to their surroundings, especially traffic. And since the game can also drain phone batteries, the BBB says make sure that you don't get stranded with a dead phone far from home. Now, your hour-by-hour -hour forecast with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. Well, today we've been finding some showers and thunderstorms out there across much of central and eastern Kentucky. A lot of that is now beginning to decrease a little bit, though it still looks the part outside. Look at this live sky cam. Hamburg Pavilion in the distance. Love those tropical clouds over top of us. And the tropical humidity is in full swing. 77 degrees, 79 percent humidity right now. So we are flirting with that 80-80 club. Uh, temperatures across the entire region, mainly into the mid and upper 70s. Most thermometers today could not get to 80 degrees. It has not been a bad summer in terms of temperatures. Has it? Rain? It's a different story. We've had a lot of it into much of the region. Take you into southern Kentucky. Some raindrops that are dying out now. Likewise, into the bluegrass region. We'll focus, though, on a little thunderstorm that is heading into Hardin County, Interstate 65 corridor. Some of the short range models try to keep that together as it works its way toward the Campbellsville area and maybe toward Boyle County. We'll keep an eye on that cold front to the northwest that I'll watch come into town as we go into Thursday. That one may spawn a stronger thunderstorm or two. Next 24 hours. Tell you what, tomorrow, don't look at just one number because one number is not going to fit all. Today, you had those general upper 70s, low 80s, depending on where you were. Tomorrow, we may go from low 80s to 90 from town to town with the threat for some scattered thunderstorms. That'll be the difference in those thunderstorms kind of keeping temperatures down versus any sunshine that will shoot that thermometer close to 90 in a few cases. Then on Thursday, cold front is on top of us. That'll have a broken line, at least, of some thunderstorms into the afternoon and evening. That same front over the weekend, especially Friday and into Saturday, is likely to put the brakes on, allowing some showers and thunderstorms to develop along that bad boy 
and the hour by hour forecast starts to pick up on that toward the tail end of this hour by hour. We'll focus on the overnight with a partly cloudy sky. A little fog is out there tomorrow morning. I think it's a little undercooked with some thunderstorms tomorrow afternoon. Then we go into Thursday, second half of the day, especially after temperatures make a run toward 90, we can get in on a gusty shower or a thunderstorm. And that may take us into Thursday evening. See a little complex trying to pop there into northern Kentucky. Look what happens on Friday. Front stalls out. Exactly where that happens remains to be seen, as always. Should be right on top of the Kentucky Tennessee border counties, allowing for some additional waves of thunderstorms to work at us from west to east. This is 2 o'clock on Saturday morning. That's as far as this particular model goes out, but kind of gives you an indication that we are going to be dealing with some more locally heavy rain threats as we go into Friday and maybe early Saturday. You're going to look at this. You're going to get discouraged. You're going to think, no, it's raining every single day. The chance is there every day. It's not going to rain outside your house every single day, certainly not all uh, day long, but the threat is there over the next week. Now, the threat does decrease a little bit as we get deeper into the weekend and early next week. But short term, more in the way of at least some scattered thunderstorms. You get outside of one of those tomorrow, the steam is on, and may flirt with Nadia on any mm -hmm. given thermometer. Every single day, a chance. Every single day, a chance is there. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Well, a Lexington woman is spending her birthday by giving back to others. Christina Breeding works for Lexington Habitat for Humanity, and she turns 30 today. To celebrate, she's doing 30 good deeds today, which includes helping people with groceries, paying for gas for someone's car, and giving free hugs. I've been just thinking about and praying about different things I could do today, 30 different things I could do to try to bless mm -hmm. people. Okay. And, um, and so I made a schedule out and got prepared. Christina says she got the idea from a friend who did something similar on her birthday. So happy birthday to yeah. her and great job for what she's doing out excellent, there. Excellent, excellent. Well, Kentucky will honor its past in the upcoming season, Rob. Well, that's right. The men who integrated UK football will be remembered. And could this be the year that Tennessee returns to the top in the East? The Vols of the SEC meetings. That's next in sports. Well, the Tennessee Vols have made strides under Butch Jones, and the feeling in Knoxville is that this can be the year the Vols return to the top of the SEC East. Dick Gabriel is on hand at the SEC meetings as Tennessee took its turn this afternoon. When Butch Jones took over at Tennessee in 2013, he had 31 days to sign a recruiting class. And it's the 11 seniors remaining from that group who are hoping to lead the Vols back to the top of the SEC East. They were the foundational class. Uh, they were the class where we had 31 days to assemble, and we spoke about, you know, them taking ownership and getting Tennessee football back to relevance. We came in saying, you know, we will obviously want to put Tennessee back on the map and, you know, change the program, turn it around, which we have done. They're excited again in Knoxville about the prospects of finally beating Florida and returning to the SEC championship game in Atlanta. You know, our main thing is, you know, holding ourselves to a higher standard than anyone. Holding ourselves to a standard of we're going to focus on one thing we can get better at daily, and that will help us accomplish the big goal in the end. Dobbs, the quarterback majoring in rocket science, is getting some mention as a Heisman Trophy candidate. Personally, myself, the only thing I can worry about is, you know, I can be the best quarterback for Tennessee. Um, you know, all the other accolades and everything will come. You know, if you go out and you compete and you, you can be the best quarterback you can be for the University of Tennessee. Make no mistake, Jones understands that even though building a champion is a process, the time is always now. We live in a week-to-week -week society. Uh, love is conditional. I think we all get that when we signed up for this profession, and, and particularly in this conference as well. In Birmingham, Dick Gabriel, WKYT. Thank you, Dick. The Wildcats take their turn down at the SEC meetings tomorrow. And in advance of that appearance, the school announcing today that it will honor four former players who integrated the SEC. This poster was unveiled to the team last night. The modern players in it are wearing the numbers of Greg Page, 82, Nate Northington, 23, Wilbur Hackett, 41, and Houston Hogg, 42. The poster is meant to pay tribute to the four trailblazers paving the way for what Kentucky football is today. The 2016 season 
marks 50 years since Northington and Page enrolled at Kentucky back in 1966. A little summer league action this afternoon. Trey Lyles in action. Jazz facing the Trailblazers. Trey showing off his range, knocking down the three from the left wing. He had five of Utah's first seven. Second quarter, Trey delivers another Trey from almost the same spot. He had 13 in the first half. Then in the third, Trey fires from the top of the arc for another three pointer. Lyles has 28 points. Game in overtime. Portland has an 87 to 85 lead. Trey Lyles really playing well. Sam Amber Beck. A final check of your first alert forecast is next. Then on the CBS Evening News, Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg has created some controversy for what she said about presidential candidate Donald Trump.